Roll for Crit here to bring you a review of an escape room, but one different from the kind that you're probably used to playing in person or at home with tabletop games. This is a virtual escape room game that you can play online with your friends. Comes from The Escape Game, which is a company that has multiple physical locations all across the US. But now that a lot of people are stuck at home, they have come out with something new. It is called The Escape Game Unlocked. And we played through the first two volumes. There will be a third one. It's not been released yet at the time of this recording, uh, which is called The Heist. Yes, the way that The Heist works is you will be sharing over something like Zoom or Google Chat, and you will go to a site where they will have you ask a question. They'll be like, all right, first we need to discover what schools did this character go to. You'll have a whole bunch of evidence of documents you can look at, and some of them may apply to that question now. Some may be required for a later thing. So you're going to need to decipher and try to find out, like, from the newspaper, is this useful now? Can I read the clues in it? Or maybe I'll do something else. And when you answer the questions correctly, they'll give a check mark, which will lead to the next set of questions, which then you can learn to use evidence. There's also sometimes sites you can go to that they have, like uh, example sites. Even sometimes look things up on Google to try to find out if things make sense or not. So it really is trying to take advantage of sitting down in front of a computer instead of being in an actual room when you're tossing around objects and stuff. And as Jonathan alluded to before, this has three parts and it's actually one connected storyline. You are pretty much trying to find evidence to catch and arrest an, an art thief by the goes by the name of Han. If you can't guess that you'll probably try to find his true identity and also his motive. We'll see what happens in part three. There's also some video files that will be played and have to be shared by the uh, sort of the main host, I guess you could call the person, which are pretty funny. So they do have some live recordings as if you're getting briefings, which I think are pretty cute. Yeah, the way it works is one person really has to share their screen while everyone else has their own individual copies of PDFs, which basically simulates what it would be like with uh, an at-home escape room where like you take out a box and there's all oh, there's different documents you can look through. But of course now they're all digital and like you said you can one person maybe is looking something up on maybe you need to use a Google Maps or one person's going to a different website that maybe some sp special websites that they designed for you to look for clues on. Uh, things like that. Uh, and if you're familiar with any escape room games, I'd say you'll be pretty much at home. And even if you're not, uh, I think this is a pretty uh, light one that like will introduce you to the concepts pretty well. The, I, the first two volumes are pretty different, I think, in how they're laid out and how they work. I mentioned before that you'll have multiple PDFs you can look at. With the first volume, uh, those are a separate download and everyone can look through those at any time they want. In the second volume, you only unlock those as play progresses. So it does require one person to share those uh, with the rest of the team as they discover them, which is kind of a different dynamic. Uh, how did, what did you think maybe about that, Will, or I don't know, how do you feel this this compares to other escape rooms you've experienced in real life or in board game form? Well, in real life, one of the things is you're definitely, since you're doing a lot more with objects and stuff, at least the last one I went to. So this one definitely feels, I think, more closely related to the ones you might buy like at a Target or something, you know, like exit or unlock. There's no, yeah, you're not like trying to open a box or anything like that. Yeah. It's more just dealing with these pieces. And in comparison to that, I would say this one feels like they try to make it feel more realistic, which does, I think, relate to when you go into an escape room, usually they're like, at least the one I went, like, you know, they try to make it look like a pirate ship with actual pirate parts. So, sure. like, the puzzles here aren't just, most of them aren't like we have if Q equals A and Z and, like, some much weird, it seems like you have to, like, all right, if he, if we have, tw like, 10 schools listed going to my first, uh, story, which is the first puzzle, so not too much of a spoiler. How can we piece together from this news article that makes sense that he was th in that location? Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. There's not any kind of ciphers or um, the the. I don't, I don't even know if I would call most of the things puzzles per se. It really it is like you said more grounded in a sense. It feels more realistic uh, to an extent. Of course, it's all heightened. Some of it is based in real art heists and things we found, which is kind of a cool twist. I personally, I tend to really enjoy some of those uh, more abstract puzzles. It depends on how they're done. I don't know that I was 
a huge fan of all the puzzles in this one. I definitely personally preferred volume one to volume two. Huh. I, I was going to say I preferred two to one. Interesting. <laughs> um, I just thought volume one flowed. Um, I, you know, I, volume one was more open ended and I liked that. It felt like everyone could kind of, Oh, I'm looking through this. I'm looking through that and let's come together. Whereas volume two, I feel like was more linear and you really did. We we're all on the same path at the same time, which is interesting. I don't think it's bad, but I, I sort of lean towards the, the former for me. I, I like the linear path because during that first section, I was looking at stuff that didn't matter. And then I found out like, oh, this this isn't important at all. Mm, well, so some, you can most feel of it like was important at some point, though. I, I don't think there sort were sort of, but like even then, it was like I I just didn't feel. It feels a little annoying sometimes when you're like I'm trying to help, and turns out I've been just off running around in circles for nothing. Like <laughs> mm-hmm. when I could, st- I'm still gonna look at that later on. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it definitely but, makes the the second part I think a little easier because there's it's pretty much guaranteed that the thing you're looking at is the thing that's important. Right. But I will say with the first one, because you get a PDF, you can just give everyone all the information. It's a lot nicer to be able to look at because multiple times you'll have to look at a bunch of documents to try to solve whatever the puzzle is. And, you know, sometimes I want to look at page two, for example, but Jonathan, you've already scrolled past it. You're looking at page three. (laughs) So, you know, when Jonathan was the one who hosted everything, it was a little annoying when I kept going like, can I go back? (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah sometimes there's websites and you can share stuff and i i could have you know downloaded the images and sent them to you guys uh, right but like it wasn't provided like the first one yeah would it would have been nice if they had some like a download that said once you reach this point maybe you can click on this and get all these objects or whatever it is but going to what you were talking about earlier about abstract versus not abstract while i love the idea of trying to keep things much more grounded I do think sometimes it can be a little bit hard because it may either become way too hard or easy depending on people's knowledge. Like, yes, we can just Google everything, but sometimes, at least I know I was worried about this, maybe because I'm playing detective, a uh, modern crime story. I'm like, am I allowed to Google? Like, you're not really sure sometimes. If you like- look, yeah, this was something, if you look at the frequently asked questions, they do tell you, yes, you can look up anything that you need to. And sometimes you have to, but it, they didn't, it wasn't really clear to us at the start. I, I had to look into the frequently asked questions to find that. And that's why sometimes with the abstract puzzle, you don't have to feel like that. You can be like, all right, I'm just, here's my puzzle. Got to try to solve it. So I think a, a mixture of those two could be fine. In particular, they did sort of have one with a that was I would consider abstract. I was saying too much that I did really enjoy. If you recall, Jonathan, do salt open a lock without trying to say too much. Right, right, right. Yeah, uh, I I don't think maybe I'm just becoming a puzzle snob, but I don't think any of the puzzles in this game are. If if you like have done a lot of escape rooms with people. Uh, I think it's all going to be pretty familiar territory. I don't feel like there was anything that I was like, oh, wow, like I've never seen a puzzle like that before in a game. But yeah, I think part of it is like you can get away some of this stuff in actual lock rooms because you're in a whole room finding pieces like, you know, holding a puzzle piece is very different than just seeing it on a screen. (laughs) For sure. Um, I definitely agree. This was on the probably easier end for puzzles we've played with in general. But what is nice is if you do get lost, which I think it's definitely more likely in the first case because sometimes you don't know what evidence you're supposed to be looking at. Yeah. There are hints you can look at that will help out for stuff, yep, which yep. Um, is very nice. And I do think it can come to the point where they tell you the answer. We didn't have to do that, luckily. Um, I think we did mess around with it a little afterwards. Was that correct If I, uh, afterwards when we saw it? It could say the answer? That's right. Yeah, it does have the full solution if you're really stuck. So that is very nice, too, because sometimes, you know, it can be a pain in, depending on the age of the audience, too, to help out with if you want to bring some uh, kids along for that. Because I don't think this is too age restrictive of no, an escape room. You could definitely do this one with, with all ages, I think. Yeah. Oh, at least the first two cases. We don't know what happens in case three. Things can get really wild there. Crits and misses for the escape game unlocked the heist. Crits. This is an easy way for you to take part in an escape room with your friends or family from wherever you are in the world online. We've seen tabletop versions of escape rooms, but this allows people who are either too far away or maybe stuck at home to be able to all join together and play a game. 
The heist takes place over multiple volumes, and while the flow and puzzles change between those volumes, the story is consistent, and considering the game is all online, the theme is portrayed fairly well. Misses. Because this is an online experience instead of being a physical one, there are some issues we have with how the puzzle pieces and information are being handed out. One person is the host, and because of that, they really have to share all the documents and videos. This can be very annoying when he has to either show the video, it's a little choppy for other people, or if for whatever reason that they don't have PDFs, they have to jump back and forth to whatever everyone's seeing. In a physical experience, usually you split the documents, so someone's looking at one puzzle while someone's looking at a different one, whether it be a tabletop escape room or a actual physical escape room. This unfortunately does not have that, which can cause some problems depending on how large your group is. Due to the virtual nature of this game, some of the puzzles may be hit or miss for you, depending on how well you're able to communicate with other players, looking through the different documents, or how easily you're able to find the information and navigate the different websites. As of this point, we've only played parts two out of three of the entire story of the heist, so we don't know how it's going to end, but the beats itself we found very enjoyable. We also have to recognize that we're reviewing this right now when a lot of people are staying home in order to stay safe and it's hard to analyze it because it seems really good, but will this still stand up if you had the option to go to an actual escape room or get one of those exit table to the table? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think that the concept is very sound, and I think that uh, this could be something really fun, and a lot of people still uh, maybe, you know, those escape room games can be kind of expensive. Uh, that Right now, each of these volumes is $10, uh, and you could get uh, the first two in a bundle for 17 And if you split that between the cost of four players, we should mention this goes, you can play this solo or up to four players. At least they recommend. You could play more if you wanted to. Um, that's a pretty cheap uh, offering for uh, an escape room style game. So I think there's a lot of potential and I'm curious to see how volume three goes, because as we mentioned, volumes one and two had, had pretty different feels to them. So I'm curious if they try something even more different for the third one. I will say they are, I did feel a little, they're a little short and I think that, I mean, splitting the cost, if you're spending like a couple bucks uh, and you like escape rooms a lot, then I think this is an easy one to recommend. If you're a solo player and you want to try these, I don't know that I feel like the two, even the two of these together is worth 20 bucks to me. I would say get an exit game instead. I think that's a better value, to be honest. But you can't play those online with people. So, you know, there's there's ups and downs to, to the different sides of things. It definitely I feel like it's geared towards multiple people because you have that online nature, as you stated. Um I will say that I don't think just for this in general with any kind of escape or exit room, you really don't want to go above four ever. <laughs> uh, yeah, it depends. Yeah, some, some of the real life ones can be uh, more complicated. But yeah, a lot of times we've found uh, you, if you go too many cooks in the kitchen, it can get crazy. <laughs> uh, but you can check it out for yourself because it's up there right now. Uh, we'll put a link in the description below and you can try volumes one and two. And when three comes out, maybe we'll follow up with our thoughts on that. Or you can let us know which volume is your favorite in the comments below. Uh, they're also doing this crazy thing right now uh, at the escape game where they're doing virtual remote play where you actually go through real escape games, but you're seeing through the POV of someone else with a camera on their helmet or something. Uh, so uh, crazy stuff that I, I think you should take a look at because uh, that's what we're doing right now. We're coming up with creative solutions <laughs> to, to the problem of not getting out of the house. Man, I feel really bad. Whoever has the camera on their head, because <laughs> if there's someone like me behind the camera, they're going to be like, look left. No, no, no. Back right again. Now left. <laughs> Could be a struggle. <laughs> but until we finish part three, I'm Will. I'm Jonathan. And this has been Roll for Crit. Support our Patreon, like this video, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Watch more of our content now to hold back Cthulhu's madness. 